keyboard and sing with us. I'm the proud of seated. We welcome you to worship at Grace United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here with us to worship God on this special day, and we want to introduce ourselves. So I'm one of the pastors here. My name is Jessica. And my name is Drew. I get to be one of the pastors here too. Welcome one and all, especially if it's your first Sunday with us. Uh, We're glad that you were led to Grace. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Yes, and we want to invite you to connect with us by using one of the connect cards that you will find in your pew, Um, or if you're worshiping with us online, you will see a way to click a link to connect with us, and you can do that by filling in, those of you here, filling in the paper copy and dropping it in a basket when you bring your offerings uh, later in the service, or you can scan this blue card with your smartphone and connect with us that way, but this is a way for us to celebrate that you are here, to know the ways that we can pray for you and support you. So thank you for doing that. Uh, We want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms and uh, also acknowledge that uh, it can be tough. We know that there's a number of folks in the church for whom this is uh, your first Mother's Day without your mom. And so Mm -hmm. whether you're feeling really happy or not so happy, you've come to the right place. Uh, We're glad that you're here and we get to worship together. Today at Grace is also Confirmation Sunday. And so at the 11 o'clock service, we will be uh, confirming 11 young people into the church, and we're thrilled about that. Uh, And so our celebration of that confirmation begins with this worship service. Uh, So together we will pray for them and celebrate the God revealed in Jesus Christ who has welcomed them into this church family. Let us pray. Almighty God, to know you is everlasting life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, or even if you're worshiping online, stand and let's sing together, Lift High the Cross. This is hymn number 159 in the hymnals in the pews, and the lyrics are on the screen. And this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose. And each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, again, uh, happy Sunday, happy Confirmation Sunday, happy Mother's Day, especially to my mom, who may be worshiping online. I get full credit for doing this. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. If, uh, 
if you, you might be new to Grace, you might have been with us all through Lent and now into Easter. If you were worshiping with us at the beginning of Lent, on Ash Wednesday, you may remember that I mentioned planting seeds for our garden. Actually, I mentioned that I had planned to do this as a Lenten discipline, but had already failed. I did eventually plant those seeds, though. Do you want to see how they're doing? Here's a picture. You're being very generous. The truth is, uh, most of these plants are asparagus, and it doesn't take a horticulturalist to know that asparagus is supposed to grow up. Today, the good news from the scripture is that God is a better gardener than I am. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Your word written in the scriptures your word proclaimed in the church, your word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Amen. Last month, I heard a faith story from a woman who was first led to grace as a preschool student. She remembers being brought here by her grandmother to school and then sometimes to Sunday school. She says she vividly remembers from a very early age being fascinated by the cross in the sanctuary. She said beyond that, though, she didn't really grow up in the church. It wasn't until decades later, after a traumatic experience, that she was led back into Christian community at her college. There, she received grace and healing, and she eventually accepted God's grace for herself and professed her faith openly. Now, She is a youth and young adult leader in this church. In fact, she's a member of our leadership board at the very same church that her grandmother brought her to as a child. Now she's worshiping and leading under that same cross that captured her attention years ago. She told us this story at our last month's board meeting. This is how we begin our meetings now, with board members sharing their story of faith. And as she finished, you could hear all these older male board members sniffling a little bit and wiping up the corners of their eyes. They were moved. We paused for a moment in the silence. And then, as has become our custom, I asked them, what does this story tell us about God? What can we conclude to be true about God because of the story our sister just told us? And one of those men, choking back tears, said, it tells us that God plants seeds. And even though it may take a very long time, those seeds grow and they bear fruit. When I heard that the Youth Council of Grace United Methodist Church chose the word grow as their theme for the year, I was pumped. Growth, specifically the growth of plant life, is one of the most common metaphors used in the Bible. The whole story of Scripture begins in a garden, of course, but growth proves to be a real struggle for humanity. When we try to grow our own way, we fail. And so God chooses a particular people to cultivate, a particular people to plant and grow into a fruitful nation to bless all the nations of the world. But even they are likened to a stump, cut down, dead in sin. Nevertheless, the Bible says, God sends words through the prophets that by grace alone, a new shoot, a sprout, a new branch will come even from this stump, and it shall bear much fruit. Jesus talked about plant life all the time. Consider the lilies of the field. Consider the mustard seed, the fig tree that needs some manure. He's also the one who said, unless a seed dies and is buried in the ground, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Later, the church is connected to this same metaphor We are connected to God's chosen tree, God's chosen people. We have been grafted, another 
agricultural term, adopted into the family tree of God by the one who was buried and raised for our sake. But perhaps my favorite biblical plant growth metaphor comes from Jesus himself in John 15 when he says, I am the vine. I am the vine, he says, and you are the branches. And my Father in heaven is the vine grower. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. The thing we often miss about this whole plant-based metaphor, about Jesus' own metaphor, is that he's the vine, his father is the gardener, we are just the branches. We can often hear this metaphor, this theme of growth, plant growth or otherwise, and hear it as our responsibility, something we gotta do, we gotta shape up, we gotta grow up, we gotta get going, we're supposed to bear fruit, right? But that's not what Jesus is saying. That's not what the message of the Bible is, my friends. That's not the gospel. Jesus says, we are just the branches. How do branches bear fruit? How do branches grow? How hard do they have to work? How hard does my asparagus have to work to grow? It doesn't. It can't. It's dependent on its gardener. Fruit comes not by any spe special action on the part of the branches. Branches bear fruit when they are rooted in the vine, under the care of a good gardener. In today's scripture, St. Paul is writing to a church that has gotten a little obsessed with growth. They've gotten tangled up in partisanship and personal progress to the point that they're arguing about who has grown more, who has the better spiritual gifts, and whose Christian family tree do they belong to, Paul's or this guy named Apollos. In exasperation, their pastor writes to them. He writes them a letter, and in an effort to break through to them, he reaches for this trusty plant-based metaphor. He says, you foolish branches. Sure, I planted you, Apollos watered you, but neither of us are anything. It is God who gives the growth. God gives the growth. By noon today at Grace, we will have baptized or confirmed 12 young people into the church, into Christ, into the vine. It's important for the whole church to celebrate this. They, these confirmands, are the fruit of your cultivation. They're the fruit of this church's labor, fruit that has been brought to fruition by your hands, with your help. Their families and you, their Sunday school teachers, their youth leaders, their mentors, their pastors, their prayer partners, you have planted them and watered them to get them here. It's worth us taking a moment to give thanks. In fact, it's worth for all of us to take a moment to remember the Pauls and the Apolloses of our own lives who have planted us, planted seeds of faith in our hearts, nurtured us, watered us, cared for us to bring us to whatever faith we have now. In fact, let's take a moment and name them. Who are they? Who are the ones who have nurtured you in the faith? Think of them. Who's helped you grow in faith? Say their names. For all of these, we give thanks to the Lord. It's a good and right and joyful thing to give thanks for these people, for the work of the church, and... Let it not be lost on us that St. Paul refers to all of these, all who planted and watered as nothing compared to the gardener who sent them to us. They, we, are nothing but God's servants, God's garden tools, chosen by God to bring fruit out of beloved branches. Our confirmands today are first and foremost not 
the fruit of our labor or the object of our work. They are God's garden. Chosen and loved and watered and nurtured and guided and grown by the grace of God and nothing else. We often forget the good news that we are branches in the hands of a good gardener. As for me, at the risk of overextending the metaphor, I get to be the hose. I am the garden tool chosen by God, blessed by God, called by God to splash you with the water of life. To spill forth from the mouth of the hose with the good news that you, my friends, are no more responsible for your own growth, your own salvation, than my asparagus is. But unlike my asparagus, you have a good gardener. Yours is the good gardener, the vine. The same goes for all of us. Though we may be entangled in the weeds of life or bent over in the struggle for growth, whatever the case may be, hear the good news. You just have to be a branch. You are just a branch, but your gardener is God. And the foundation of your growth is the risen Christ, Jesus, our Lord. So take heart, little branches. Give thanks. Believe the gospel. God will give the growth. Amen. Our worship continues now with a time that we call Living Thanks, a chance to offer our thanks to God for this gospel which is given to us. It's a time here at Grace when you're invited, if you feel called, to come and kneel at the altar rail. You can also use this time to place your Connect card and any gifts that you have with you in the baskets. But this time is offered to you to spend time with God. Today, if you kneel up here, you will see little envelopes with the confirmation certificates for the confirmands who will be confirmed at 11. So as you come to pray for yourself and give thanks to God, I, inc I invite you to include them in your prayers so that uh, we can all remember the good news that God gives the growth and God is still bringing forth new branches to bear fruit in the world. Let us offer our thanks to God. world no one could express 
how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, or a song in itself, at least not what you search much deeper within to the way things are here. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Our worship continues now with a time of prayer. Let us pray together. Loving God, good and faithful gardener. We come to you this day humbled by all the ways we are in need of your abundant grace, aware of the ways we have fallen short and grateful for the ways you have loved us anyways. We know that you, Lord, give us the ability to grow and God, we desire growth. Help us to grow in love for you and love for others. Help us to grow in joy for living in peacefulness in spirit. Help us to grow in patience for that which frustrates and kindness for all we meet along the journey. Help us to grow in goodness through our deeds and faithfulness in you. Help us to grow in control of our actions and our thoughts that we may reflect you in all that we do. Help us to grow in all the fruits of your spirit as we seek to be your disciple, branches that bear good fruit. We give you thanks for all that we have to be grateful for this day. For the students who will be proclaiming and confirming their faith this day. For the freedom of choice you have given us to live our best lives. And for all the people who have been mother figures in our lives. People who have shown us your love and care, nurtured us to wholeness, and taught us to be brave by modeling strength and courage. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand and let us raise our voices together in the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. This is hymn number 399 in the red hymnals, and of course the lyrics are on the screen.
are truly thankful you were able to worship with us today. Uh, we want to make sure that you know about ways to remain engaged with grace in the days ahead, and one of them includes a video. So we're going to invite you to sit down so that you can hear these opportunities and consider them prayerfully. You want to tell them about the first one? Yeah, I think it's starting. Okay, good. I didn't want them to miss this. Part. Good morning, Grace. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Barbara Barrick, and I run our local transition ministry. We began this mission back in February 2019, right before the quarantine started. Grace's local transition ministry's hands-on, in-your-face mission. We meet people, we help people. Right now, our local cooling shelter needs your love. So I'm up here on this screen today to tell you how important you are, how every way you contribute to this drive impacts real people, our neighbors, our friends. Through the grace of God, I have been uh, brought to meet and talk to these friends of ours. I have learned their stories, I've felt their tears, I've felt their joys, and I want you to feel these, those emotions with me. It's because of your generosity and love that I stand here today to testify. This is Brandon. He just got his first apartment. Thank you for loving him while he was out in the cold and still loving him while he's getting set up. This is Webster. He's been lucky enough and blessed enough to have steady odd jobs so he could be inside an apartment or be inside a hotel room now for a few months. He hasn't been out in the cold in a long time. This is Murphy. He has dementia. He's been homeless. He's been living in tents for about 20 years. He just finally got placed into a veteran's home and thank you for loving him all these years. This is Eric. He still lives outside but because of you, he's blessed with canned goods and toiletries, and he's just blessed to be alive. This is Michelle and Rick. They live in their car, but because of you, they're blessed enough to do that. Thank you for loving them. This is just a little of what our local transition ministry does in the name of grace. There is so much more, but for this month, please think about donating to our collection. The cooling shelter is a very important component of the humanity of love. Twice a week, twice a week, think about that. A person can get out of the heat, take a shower, get some underwear, get some food, and some toiletries. Bless you, my Grace UMC family. You are loved and you are worthy. Thank you for blessing me this beautiful morning with your time. Amen. work and we thank you for your generosity in helping the transition ministry. Um, you'll notice on your way out today that we have our mission cart. There are shopping lists available that you can pick up, but we're collecting the next couple weeks toiletries, as Barbara mentioned, for the cooling shelter. So things like toothpaste, toothbrushes, shampoo, soap, um, different items like that. Um, and so we hope that you'll grab a shopping list or if you get the weekly e-news, you'll see it in there as well um, and bring those in in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. I think I saw some folks bringing some stuff in today. So thank you very much. Uh, we also know you want to know about uh, lots of ways to enjoy next Sunday. Next Sunday at Grace is going to be a day when we celebrate the senior adult ministry in worship. And the Senior Adult Council is going to get everybody ice cream to have after both services. So you can have ice cream at like 1030 in the morning next week. So uh, be sure to come back to church next, next week uh, and enjoy that gift and that celebration. Uh, after the 11 o'clock service next week, we're going to have church chat, which is a, a brief conversation with pastors and board members. Uh, we'll give you an update on our last board me meeting. And then you can also ask any questions you've got for the leadership of the church. And then next Sunday at 6 p.m., there's a special youth ministry event, the Youth Olympics. We're teaming up with Flores United Methodist Church in Reston. They're going to come here uh, for a night of competition and fun. So if you are a teenager or you know one, uh, we're all invited to be a part of that next Sunday. Now I invite you to stand for the final benediction. Go from this place trusting in the good gardener who has brought you thus far and will not leave you. Trust that he gives the growth, that Jesus Christ blesses you, knows you, loves you, and will bear fruit through you. Go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into hearts. You're the only
words empty praise in treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied. 